Uh, so first of all, I introduce myself because I think not, not everybody knows me. I am a professor of uh, hygiene and preventive medicine at the Catholic University in Rome. And I'm uh, supporting the Italian Ministry of Health in the, the participation to this initiative because uh, as some of you probably is aware, uh, although Italy was one of the first country able to sign the declaration in 2018, uh, there was a change, uh, actually two times change in the government. And uh, there, were also, there was also a person in charge of the Ministry of Health to follow these activities, but he re retired prematurely. So all these problems created the situation where basically at the end of the day, they asked me to uh, please support this initiative and I'm very happy to do it actually. So uh, just as a very background, um, as a background information uh, for everybody in, uh, in the audience, the Italian healthcare system is a, a universal healthcare system, free at point of care. Uh, we had a constitutional reform in 2001 that made important changes in the organization of planning and the management of the offer of the national healthcare system by providing uh, the 21 regions political and operational autonomy. So currently we have a sort of 21 different regional uh, and healthcare system uh, as a result of this uh, federalist uh, process. And the situation ended up in a major regional differences, uh, North versus South, especially uh, regarding the government, answer, the organizational models and the resources availability and competences and also performances. Uh, also, in, in Italy, we experienced a large uh, underfinancing in the past 10 years. Uh, so you can see this slide uh, in terms of proportion of GDP dedicated to healthcare, which is one of the lowest uh, uh, in the biggest countries. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you think that now uh, Italy is also the oldest country in Europe in terms of proportion of old people um, over 65 years old, uh, combined to the fact that we have actually a very unhealthy population because 40% of Italians have at least one chronic disease. Um, you can understand to what extent our national health service is uh, really at, uh, under strong uh, pressure. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, moving to uh, the genomic sequencing in Italy. So uh, genome sequencing in Italy mm, is not uh, yet part of the, of the standard of care. Although uh, major investments have been done in the past year, uh, just uh, this, this month, the Ministry of Health published uh, a call for uh, reinforcing the infrastructure uh, capacity and sequencing capacity of 200 million uh, that is directed to uh, all the university and the public centers uh, operating in the country. Uh, in the past, uh, we had uh, important policy advancements in public health genomics with these two major um, guidelines that were published, the first in 2013, uh, that were mainly uh, directed to provide general guidelines on genomics and its use in healthcare and to provide indication to the National Health Service in, uh, or in order to increase the awareness of all the stakeholders uh, on the innovation-based uh, uh, I mean, uh, omic sciences. And it was mainly focusing on two pillars, uh, capacity building, uh, so providing uh, basic education on genomics to healthcare professionals, and also engaging citizens and patients in the discussion. Uh, and the second pillar was about health technology assessment uh, mm, uh, of genetic and genomic testing technologies for a later take up in the so-called essential level of care from the, from the regions. And secondly, we published also a national plan. Uh, the Ministry of Health published a national plan for innovation of a health system based on omic science later in 2017, whose main objective was to transfer genomic knowledge into the practice of health services with the final goal to increase effectiveness of prevention, diagnosis and treatment, and to promote a cultural and a scientific and technological change in the healthcare systems. So, uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, in order to implement these two plans, uh, there were a number of initiatives that were funded from the Director General of Prevention of the Ministry of Health that, however, have a very limited funding, I have to say, uh, that were mainly uh, devoted to increase, uh, as I said, the, um, the awareness from the healthcare professionals, uh, not only physicians, but also uh, nurses, uh, pharmacists, biologists, uh, technicians uh, that are running since 2014. Some of them uh, are made uh, by distance uh, since 2014, some in presence. And so far, we were able to educate more than 50,000 healthcare professionals in this way. And also, we initiated some activities uh, towards increasing stakeholder engagement, especially, um, I mean, uh, there is a survey that has been circulating the, the past few months in Italian in order to have a flavor on what's the citizen 
knowledge attitudes toward omic sciences and also to genomic data sharing. This is something running only in Italy. Um, and also, thanks to these initiatives in genomics, um, we were able to improve the, um, and implement some guidelines at regional level for implementation of genetic testing for hereditary forms of cancer, uh, mom, um, breast cancer and colorectal cancer, the hereditary form, embedded in the current uh, oncological screening programs. So next slide. Uh, okay, this is, was just a leaflet of a course. And uh, in relation to the presentation of Mark that uh, Van der Bulke of some uh, minutes before, uh, Italy contributed also to development of um, a new educational programs in cancer genomics uh, within the EPAC project that is um, uh, the work package itself on genomics is led by Mark and we were working together with Mark to implement this uh, course together with the National Institute of Health in Italy and this will be released in a couple of months. So uh, next slide, what ISAL is doing in the context of One Million Genome? Um, in the past two months, I spent uh, some uh, time, honestly, to reshape the structure because uh, very limited the contribution was given from Italy. Uh, of course, it was limited to coordination of work in group eight and nine, but the other groups were po very poorly reactive. So we set it up now uh, a more structured uh, organization. So we have a number of colleagues uh, contributed to the so-called National Mirror Group 2, 3, and 4. You can see uh, the name of this person uh, in the slide. And the uh, next one, please. The remaining working groups, uh, 5, 6, and 7, with um, a number of experts uh, uh, that were available to contribute to the development of this uh, activity in Italy. And next slide. We have the coordinators, uh, Professor Bruno Dalla Piccola and uh, Ruggero De Maria, that contributes uh, uh, for the working group eight and nine, also at the European level in the Beyond One Million Genome. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, um, what Italy is doing currently in the context of the project? Uh, um, at the European side, uh, uh, all the uh, persons that I was <laughs> presenting in the past slides are now uh, finally participating and hopefully contributed to discussion. At the, monthly, uh, at the monthly meetings. And from the national side, we're having a, a long discussion about how to make more clear the legal requirements for the genomic access and all the constraints. We are trying to co create a connection between the existing research networks, which are spread across all the regions in Italy, and also the infrastructures, because we have a number of infrastructures. Uh, the most relevant one is Elixir, but unfortunately, we have some other infrastructures where so I'm currently struggling to put all this uh, together in one unique table for uh, making more integration at the national level. Uh, again, I, um, I'm inviting all the representatives uh, of uh, the networks operating already in Italy, uh, both at the diagnostic level, but also at the research level, to join the Italian mirror groups that have been created in order to foster a broader participation and um, also, to, uh, to, we used to have additionally a monthly meeting um, at the Ministry of Health, uh, where all the 11 Italian mirror group representative update each other on the progresses. And we used to have minutes and discussion quite regularly. Next slide, please. Um, the discussion about uh, LC, as I told you, it's very, uh, we have a very um, a vibrant discussion, I have to say, especially on the legal taxonomy, all the illegal requirement on data protection, the legislation on health, uh, research and genomics. And I think that my colleagues uh, from the legal side is currently having a good discussion with the Regina that coordinates the working group too. Next slide. Uh, from the working group eight, Professor Dalla Piccola uh, told me to present these activities that is currently doing uh, jointly and in synergy with the other working groups of, of uh, Beyond One Million Genome. And um, also he contributed to um, distribute the survey at the Italian level to understand the, the number of exome sequencing, especially for the rare disease, uh, uh, from the rare disease uh, um, part. Uh, next slide. Mm, so uh, these are the results, the preliminary results that I can show today about uh, the survey on accessible genomes that was circulating uh, since I think almost the, the past year, but it was again recirculating since January this year. 
And uh, today we have uh, preliminary results from the 15 centers that responded to the survey. Actually, only few of them declared to have uh, indeed accessible genomes, while the one, the other said that uh, they might have accessible genomes, but they have to check. They still don't know. They're just checking, although they can reconsent uh, the population. Uh, next slide. And these are the results uh, in terms of um, access. So the level of access, so this data set uh, is uh, um, in the largest proportion of cases institutional. Next slide. Uh, most of them, uh, they're coming from the rare disease setting, so the agnostic uh, setting, uh, the remaining the cancer, common complex disease and infectious disease, so you can see here. Next slide, uh, um, according to the genetic data, data available, you can see that the largest majority um, is from a world exome sequencing, uh, unfortunately few from world genome sequencing, as I, as I told you, we don't have yet a strategy and it is not yet in the standard of care uh, but also we have a number of SNP array and array is, is CGH contributing so far. Uh, next slide. Um, what Italy needs today and what my colleagues ask me to present is that we need some instruction probably on what is really required to share the data in terms of standards for clinical data, standards for biobanking, standards for genomic data also on the tools that can be used to connect all the institutional data available across the Italian regions, and also the softwares that can be used to connect all the national nodes for interoperability. So I know that there is a discussion uh, around these topics uh, running. Next slide. Uh, what we are trying to do now is to map, at least me personally, what are, uh, which are the number of genomes to be sequenced in, in the next years. Of course, these numbers are much lower than those presented from UK. Um, but still, we have quite a new, good number of genome sequences in the next uh, years. And these are uh, the so th these are those who are already based on uh, funding, so that will do it anyway. But many others will be coming, especially from the uh, newly funding the initiative that I was mentioning. The, I was mentioning at the beginning of my initiative. So hopefully, these numbers will be increasing very soon. Next slide. Uh, so the next step uh, from my side is to set is to kick off this uh, national coordinating mirror group. So as asked from the European, uh, I mean from the from the coordinator of the initiative, uh, I was able to create uh, together with Professor Dalla Piccola this table, putting together uh, all the relevant uh, uh, directorate of the ministries. Uh, not only Ministry of Health, but of University of Research, Economy and Finance, and also the Department of Digital Transformation at the Presidents of the Council of Ministers, plus a number of other actors, so of course Elixir, uh, but also active citizenship to discuss uh, on how to um, integrate all the initiatives across Italy and to foster hopefully a good discussion and uh, to move forward in this sense. Um, so I think this was my, my last slide, basically. So this is, yeah, these are not useful just to say that if you want to read more on Italian policy, there are a number of publications that were that were made available uh, recently. Thank you very much.